Hello aspirants, welcome to the next part of our head injury that is the part 2 of our head injury topic. In the previous class we have discussed the basic of the head injury in that we have discussed the very important types of all types of the head injury that is our focal dead in head injury and a diffuse head injury in that one we have studied very detailed related to the hematomas that is the epidural hematoma, subdural hematoma, yes our subarachnoid and intracranial hematoma. So all that things we have studied in detail in our previous class and we have discussed the very important topic that is related to concussion, contusion, diffuse, axonal injuries also in the last class. So we have dealt with the etiologies of the head injury here in the this today's particular class I am discussing the clinical features of the head injury which is a vital part of your head injury topic okay. So why the examiner is asking question in the clinical features this many times means it is very important for the nursing officers to identify the so where the head is injured where actually we need to focus on the, that particular head injury okay so why the examiner is asking the question very importantly on the basilar skull fracture so how we will identify that basilar skull fracture how we will recognize that basilar skull fracture so what is the battle sign what is the recognize what is the halo sign we will discuss each and every thing in detail in this class so do watch the video completely and share the video too with your friends and uh, your colleagues so without wasting the time we will move for the today's very important topic that is the, our clinical features of the head injury okay. so what is the clinical features of the head injury here is the first the first clinical sign of the head injury which is in, which is a so loss of consciousness or altered level of the consciousness okay so that is our altered level of the consciousness this is the, our first sign okay first sign is the altered level of the consciousness that is due to the increased intracranial pressure okay due to increased intracranial pressure okay so and our ne next clinical features comes like this rhinorrhea what is the rhinorrhea orrhea means it's a csf leaking okay rhino means what is the rhinitis what is the rhinovirus rhino 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 means which is asking related to the nose okay that is the rhinorrhea means the csf is leaking from the nose okay csf from nose that is called rhinorrhea okay very important Rhinorrhea occurs due to the direct impact to the head and there is a break in the our ethmoid bone which a barrier between the our nasal plate and the our subarachnoid plate. So there is a damage to that particular bone. So the CSF starts leaking from the nose. Okay. So our cerebrospinal fluid which is circulating inside our subarachnoid space which starts leaking from our nose that particular thing we call the rhinorrhea we call that is the rhinorrhea okay very important csf leaking from the nose yes so from the nose other discharges also gets leaks so how we will differentiate between our rhinorrhea and it's an uh, csf or other discharge okay we are having one very important and basic test that is what we call the halo test or the halo sign or also called as the ring sign also called as the double ring sign okay so to confirm csf discharge from the nose we will do the halo sign okay so we will assess the halo sign or the ring test or the double ring test all things is only on okay so so if any CSF is leaking from the nose and ear means we will collect that particular discharge on one white color gauze pad okay so we will collect that one on one particular white gauze pad so after collecting that on that particular gauze pad so there is an concentrated red color ring so followed by the one white ring or the yellow ring that is due to the CSF okay if there is only one red color rings that is the blood which is leaking damage to the yes the veins which supplying to the nose if that ring is followed by the yellow that red color ring which is followed by the yellow color ring so that is called double ring okay okay what we call double ring or we say this one as in positive halo sign okay here it is confirming the yes csf is in the 
nose uh, leaking from the nose that is the yes our rhinorrhea okay and our otorrhea so otorrhea we can recognize directly okay but rhinorrhea is different uh, important to depression from the rhinorrhea so which confirms the csf is leaking from the nose that is our what we call the halo sign the positive halo sign means the csf is leaking from the nose and so one more test we will do we will assess the glucose in that discharge from the csf okay glucose from csf to confirm the leakage whether the leakage is csf or leakage is blood okay very important so very important two questions i told related to halocene that is the halocene is also called the double ring it is done to confirm the whether the discharge that is coming from the nose is the blood or the csf or the other discharge okay very important so that is what we call the rhinorrhea okay so next what is the otorrhea what is the oto what is the otoscopy what is the otitis media what is the otitis externa oto oto in the sense so they there are something they are talking related to our ear okay so from ear csf is leaking from the ear means that is what we call the otorrhea okay so leakage of the csf from the ear that is called the otorrhea okay so otorrhea indicates the bacillar skull fracture okay so let me explain what are all the things occurs in the bacillar skull fracture let me take one new slide here See, consider this is an our bacillus skull fracture. Okay, here is our skull. This is the base of our skull. Okay, here is the nose. You consider here is the mouth, and here is the our skull, and this is the base back side. This is the base of our skull. So, base of our skull is getting damaged. Means we call that is an bacillus skull fracture. What we call that is an bacillar skull fracture if there is damage to bacillar skull fracture here is our lobe that is the occipital lobe so occipital lobe is responsible for the yes vision perception and here it comes our ears okay here it comes our ears so what all are the history which will examiner will give in the bacillar skull fracture means there is leakage of the csf from the ear that is what we call otorrhea and due to the damage of the occipital lobe there is an altered vision perception okay altered vision perception or he can give it as a diplopia okay or double vision okay in the history he is giving the otorrhea in history he is giving the diplopia along with yes the battle sign along with the battle sign what is the battle sign battle sign is the retro auricular ecchymosis retro means behind back side auricular means our ear the blood get is accumulating behind our ear that is called the retro auricular ecchymosis also we call this is a battle sign okay what we call this is a battle sign very important so battle sign and altered vision yes there is diplopia and yes otorrhea otorrhea battle sign okay and altered vision he is giving in the exam question history means he is want to ask you related to a bacillar skull fracture okay very important for your all competitive exams okay so here is our clinical main questions we have discussed related to the rhinorrhea so how to confirm the csf in the nose discharge and we have discussed related to the yes otorrhea that is the csf leaking from the ear and so if in case the fracture occurs in the front of our skull the most commonly our orbital area gets damages so due to that orbital area damages 
there is an ecchymosis means the collection of the blood around surround our eyes okay around surround our eyes that is called here here is the black color means this what is the, this this is accumulation ecchymosis ecchymosis is the collection of the blood in the subcutaneous tissue okay this is called ecchymosis so which is occurring in the periorbital area so that is called as the periorbital ecchymosis also we call that is a recon sign okay recon sign occurs when the head injury occurs in from the front that is the yes the, our recon sign and the battle sign and the double sign or uh, halo sign okay so these are the signs which are asking in the exams okay so periorbital ecchymosis means the uh, around the around the orbital area there is an ecchymosis that is called as the periorbital ecchymosis what is the battle sign battle sign is that uh, that is retro auricular ecchymosis what is the halo sign we have discussed and uh, neck rigidity also occurs due to the damage to the skull so we are unable to move the neck so that is the neck rigidity also occurs okay so and visible disturbance occurs in the yes basilar skull structure and the vital signs changes that is the cushing triad occurs due to the increased intracranial pressure okay due to the increased intracranial pressure there is cushing triad occurs in the cushing triad so very important tricks i will tell to remember cushing triad so here is one direction like this okay here are the two directions like this remember increased systolic blood pressure means the hypertension occurs with widened pulse pressure okay increased systolic blood pressure with widened pulse pressure and here is the decreased heart rate that is the bradycardia occurs with bonding pulse yes and here is another one decrease that is the decreased respiratory rate with irregular respiration these three symptoms are the vital signs changes in the blood pressure heart rate and respiratory rate so that is what we call as a cushing triad okay so very important which occurs in the yes increased intracranial pressure okay so and paresthesia paralysis also we seen based on the site of the head injury and increased intracranial pressure also we seen okay so these are all the very important clinical manifestations uh, which are related to the head injury okay so in next class we will discuss very important topic that is the intracranial pressure that is increased intracranial pressure we will discuss in detail so after this class we will go for the management of our head injury and increased intracranial pressure in the increased intracranial pressure each and every point we will study like that is what is the normal intracranial pressure what is the mild moderate severe when the brain uh, herniation occurs so how, how we will monitor the intracranial pressure what is the decorticate position what is the decerebrate position what is the positive babinski reflex what is the negative babinski reflex so each and every point we will study in detail in the next class so thanks for watching this head injury a video so management of the head injury and nursing responsibilities in the management of the head injury i will take in the next class due to the length of the class so thanks for watching the video if you found this video very helpful and important for you please subscribe to channel and uh, click on the bell button so you can get notified when i upload my video okay so thanks for watching the video keep connected thank you